record this and post it on the website as well as the digital newsletter that we'll be sharing towards the end of the presentation. In terms of the audience that we're here, here today, we understand there are families that um, have selected either cohort A, which were designated as Mondays and Wednesdays in person, or cohort B, designated them as students as in person on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and cohort V is full virtual students, um, about uh, 400 plus students that have and families selected to be fully virtual. So, you know, we, we are tailoring this presentation to all audiences. Again, if we, you have a question, please feel free to ask us throughout the presentation. Um, in addition to introducing the terrific team that I get to work with every day, um, we'll review goals and expectations in terms of hybrid learning, the bell schedules, instructional expectations, and the supports that we have for you as parents. We understand during this presentation, you're either gonna take a snapshot um, of this or write down notes, no need to do that. We'll post this on the website and we'll talk about how you can access all of this information in, in a couple of ways. Mr. Price will go over technology supports needed for either an in-person learner or a home learner. We'll review student expectations in terms of attendance and our code of conduct. Mr. Bretz, and we are lucky enough to have our school nurse here this evening taking the time to present important health and safety information um, that's critical for our students to enter and staff to enter the building safely beginning on Monday. And finally, supports that we're offering all of our students um, as we go through the, the hybrid phase in virtual learning. I'm fortunate enough to work with such a terrific team and you know, they have been instrumental in um, the information that we've gathered, the collaborative work with our department chairs, um, ensuring rooms are ready with desks arranged with smaller class sizes. Um, you, you name it, the team has been there since, since March um, when we had to pivot over to virtual learning into the summer. And then here we are already in October, unbelievably. So we have Mr. Ascona, one of our assistant principals. He'll be reviewing bonus block information, parking information, and expectations in terms of code of conduct as reminders for our families and information we did review with our students. One of our other assistant principals and also been really busy with our fall athletics, kudos and congratulations to all of our student athletes um, and clubs and the active fall activities. Mr. Bretz um, will be um, reviewing uh, safety and health in, uh, implications and expectations during our presentation today. Ms. King will be going over information pertaining to supports that we have at Plymouth White Marsh High School and how lunches are gonna work for all of our in-person learners. And Mr. Price, finally, last but not least, we'll be reviewing technology items for you as well as opportunities to access Canvas from your child's page. Welcome once again, thanks for being here. And if parents have to step out, entirely understand busy lives, we are recording this and we'll make sure we post this on the website as well as um, our digital newsletter. Once again, I'm going back to this slide, it feels like this is the fourth or fifth time that we've um, projected this for all of our families. Just so we're on the same page, you see in the green where we are now as per the board's approval of our health and safety plan, we are in the hybrid learning phase, which means that we have students in either cohort A, as we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, cohort B or co cohort V. What are the goals look like? And this looks probably exactly the same. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page of expectations. This was shared with our staff. Um, collaboratively developed based upon feedback from the community and um, the committee work from the summer from parents and students and, and from our staff, their experiences with virtual learning and our department chair has been actually absolutely critical as well. Um, I think number one is obviously establishing and maintaining at this point set expectations and standards. We felt that was important in maintaining that type of consistency in terms of attendance, our schedule and accountability. We take great pride in Colonial School District and Plymouth White Marsh High School in high quality teaching and learning. Um, our teachers have spent um, summertime in terms of Canvas, the August Professional Development Week um, this past Monday, um, as well as half day Fridays that we've had uh, in to, excuse me, following Monday, a week ago, uh, feels like it was yesterday, preparing for virtual instruction, collaboratively working together to recreate lessons that are synchronous or asynchronous. We wanna make sure that we continue with the high quality teaching and learning. 
It's important, and Ms. King will review that later, that we support our students academically and socially, as well as uh, uh, keeping a, a pulse on the social emotional well-being of all of our students and providing the supports and resources our students need. In terms of hybrid instruction and our schedule, go back to this graphic. And uh, so if you're a parent and your, your child or guardian, your child is a cohort A student, um, your uh, child's going to be in person on either Mondays or Wednesdays, remote access from home Tuesdays and Thursdays. Cohort B, in person Tuesdays and Thursdays, remote access on Mondays and Wednesdays. And full virtuals, you can see remote access from home daily. Um, we will be sending communication to all families this Friday and included in that inf information, we made a number of changes, over 100 changes at a request from parents or for other reasons. We'll be receiving once again your assignment. I know parents had questions about that. We'll make sure we include that in our distribution information this Friday. All right, um, in terms of our schedule, if you take a look to the left and this is posted on our Canvas page, when reviewed it with our students, we'll review it with two more classes tomorrow. And once again, we'll share the venues that you'll ensure to access this information if you're a, a parent or guardian. Um, because of transportation in other buildings, we are going back to our traditional start time of 7.35 a.m. However, if you can see the top left, we will have a staggered arrival starting at 7.05 a.m. Our buses will arrive between 7.05 and 7.15. There we go. It's, in, it's important that we stagger arrival just so we don't have congregating within our, our student body or our staff. Um, so we have one group arriving between 7.05 and 7.15, which are our bus drop-off students. We're asking all walkers and students being dropped off to do so between 7.20 and 7.35. As you can see the designated area that has not changed. It's the rear of the building um, towards the island and we'll have security, most likely Mr. Rauscher, an administrator standing right there, guiding all the families and directing them as they progress, getting them out of the car. Our drivers and Mr. Ascona will be going over that information in terms of parking. We'll, we'll can arrive between 720 and 735. And we have designated areas throughout our campus thankful that our, our whole campus has been repaid, looking fantastic and re ready for our student drivers to arrive. So where are the students heading? They are heading directly to block one. Very important, we cannot have congregating um, within our building. They'll report directly to block one starting at 7.05. If they arrive at that time, our staff and our teachers will be in the classrooms to supervise our students. So if they're in the room for about 25, 30 minutes, good opportunity to get organized for the day. Other students will be filtering in, um, in between that block of time and ultimately block one will begin at 735 and that's for both learners, whether you're an in person learner, or you're at home learning virtually is 735 is will be the in person instruction by the teacher, as well as asking for students at home to access the instruction via zoom. So that has not changed if you're home instruction will maintain, maintain remain the same as far as how you're accessing the curriculum and the instruction. Based upon feedback from families, students, and teachers, we did maintain the 10 minute transition. As you can see here in the schedule for block one, for example, ends at 8.30 a.m. and block two begins at 8.40 a.m. 10 minutes in there, and that's important for our students that are transitioning in the hallways here, if they're an in-person learner. And Mr. Bretz will be showing a, a, a picture of what our hallways look like and how that's going to look in terms of transitions. And obviously for students that are at home, it's important they have that time as well to take a break, use the restroom, grab a snack, get, get some, uh, get, put their screen down and, and get prepared for their next block. 55 minutes per block, as you can see, bonus block has shifted back to after block three. Mr. Ascona will be reviewing um, how that's going to work and how our students can sign up for particular bonus blocks and club meetings, which is a big piece of our schedule. Another part that's shifting during hybrid learning are lunches. You know, right now, as, as we all know, lunch is 30 minutes at the same time. However, it's important uh, in-person learners, we have a max capacity in our cafeteria and alternate locations that we're using for lunches. We need to keep at a, at a, at a minimum in terms of sizes are concerned. So we'll have an A lunch between 11.20 and 
a B lunch between 11.55 and 12.25, and then a C lunch between 12.30 and one o'clock. Our staff will um, know their lunch, whether it's A, B, or C, and then they'll know that tomorrow, then we'll communicate it with all of our students. I know it's a big question. It's important we had to rearrange it based upon sizes. So we're finalizing details in terms of the A, B, and C as we speak, and we'll communicate this with the staff and then and, and thereafter with the students. Block five is between 110 and 205. And as you can see there, we will have a staggered dismissal at 205 to 220. Um, we'll be dismissing, speed up here so you can show you the graphic. Um, so all home learners, virtual learners, their, their academic day will conclude at 205. And if they're in-person learners, we have in the building every in-person learner. If you're a, a pickup student or a walker, at 205 to 210, you will be dismissed. Ms. Procaccino will go on the loudspeaker and dismiss that group of students. Between 205 and 215, if we have student drivers as well as siblings uh, attending with a student driver, they'll be dismissed between 205 and 215, and we'll release the drivers first before the buses leave. And then the bus riders will be called down at 215 for, for dismissal. So we'll have that 15 minute block of time to dismiss all of our students, which is going to be really important. Going back to the schedule, apologize for impacting your eyes right there, going back and forth, but it's important we show you that graphic. Um, Fridays, we communicate in the previous communication is going to be an 11.45 a.m. dismissal schedule. Um, the calendar and schedule is posted on the Canvas page, as well as I'll show you how we're going to access that for parents. Um, it's important that our, our staff, they have time to collaborate and plan. As, as we all know, a hybrid instruction is vastly different than traditional learning brick and mortar. We want our students back. We miss our students. However, we do know that we do have a group of students, about 30% in the building, um, and then about uh, you know, 60 to 70% that are at home you know, learning virtually. So that time is critical between 1215 and 245 for our staff to work collaboratively to plan. So the morning will be synchronous instruction between 7.35 and 11.45 a.m. for all of our students. And in the afternoon time will be asynchronous learning for our students, make up work, activities um, based upon their content area um, and catch up work if that's needed in particular classes. Accessing the information, and Mr. Price will go over, if you have not, I know one of the board members, Mrs. Epstein, mentioned this at the board meeting last week, how thrilled she is to receive all of the alerts for her kids in the building. Um, it, it, it is such a great piece and, and good uh, item for you, and he'll be reviewing that and how to access that information. So if you can take a look um, here in the Canvas page, and here's the error to the bell schedule. If parents, you select and even students select that button, PW Bell Schedule will take all of our users directly to the page and you can access our bell schedule. You can see here is the exact bell schedule for hybrid learning in terms of the standard bell schedule as well as 11.45 a.m. dismissal hybrid schedule. So parents, if you ever need to access that, if you're son or daughter asks you or tries, tries to pull a fast one on you, you can really pull, pull up the schedule here and access that for yourselves right away. Mr. Ascone, I'd like to review student parking. Sure, thank you, Dr. Bacani. Um, this year, uh, due to uh, the pandemic and having uh, only a certain number of students on campus at the same time, we are not using uh, parking passes. In the past, students would purchase a parking pass for $25 uh, and hang them on their, uh, uh, on their uh, rear view mirror so that we could identify who the car was and also limit the number of spaces based on uh, how many spaces we have available. Since we have ample spaces, um, we will not be issuing passes. So all students are permitted to drive on campus. The only thing we, um, require is that students park in yellow spaces. They should be aware of that and we are sharing that with them. That has not changed uh, from previous um, years. Also with the new paving project, the, the white and yellow markers are much more visible. So there's no confusion um, now. Uh, and also obviously, um, you know, we ask the students drive safely. 
follow guidelines, make sure they're not speeding within the uh, the parking lot, not driving, allowing pedestrians to, to walk in front of the cars. Um, if there are any issues, we will issue warnings. And if, if uh, they continue, then parking privileges may be revoked. Thank you, Mr. Esco. And I already saw a parent question there regarding parking. Thanks for answering that. Important topic for our students, especially our seniors. All right, I'm trying to walk you through the day right now. So we talked a little bit about what the schedule looks like when, when our students arrive at the building, what it looks like when they're at home. Um, this is pertaining to all our in-person learners, cohort A or B. Um, critical, number one is all students are required to wear a mask at all times. And similar to being in, in, in a potential restaurant or a store, uh, that's our expectation with our students and our staff is at all times wearing a mask. And, the only time they may remove a mask is when they're seated or eating or drinking during um, lunch or breakfast, which Ms. King will be reviewing shortly. Regarding social distancing, and it, it's, it's funny, we had, uh, we greeted our freshman students today, thanks to our orientation ambassadors today, Ms. King organized that. Um, we had to provide some reminders to our students to ensure that they're six feet apart. We get it. When, when students are socialized and we talk to the kids today, um, during our presentation for the class of, of 2021, the seniors is that you understand even adults, they get an opportunity, they want to talk and converse closely. As, as we understand, the research is showing is that it's uh, duration and density in terms of COVID-19. So we wanna minimize that and minimize risk for sure. So students must remain six feet apart. Uh, Mr. Bretz will show a picture of what the classrooms look like. A lot of work was conducted behind the scenes to ensure all desks and spaces are six feet apart and we're going to require all students to do so. We understand there may be opportunities, kids are talking with one another, and we'll have to gently remind them, but it's for the safety and well-being of all of our students and staff, and we appreciate your support with that. We're asking students not to physically touch each other, whether it's a high five or a fist bump. I know it's really hard. I had a moment today, had my arm out, my administrative team, they were laughing at me, I had to pull back um, as a reminder, um, but very important, again, with, with, with spreading potential germs. Um, as we talked about with a 7.05 a.m. morning arrival time, we're asking no congregating in the hallways or bathrooms. Um, Mr. Ascon will go over the bathroom protocols, but um, in, important again that, that students aren't congregating all, all in one in, in lumps of, of time, um, especially in the morning time or during down times like our transition periods. All right, I know a, a, a significant amount of questions and I spoke with a number of parents and guardians about what this is going to look like. Um, I want to give a, a thanks to our staff for working vigorously as we're implementing virtual instruction right now, working collaboratively to execute hybrid instruction. Um, this is new to all of us. And what I, what I reminded our staff is let's, let's just do our best. We did our, we're doing our best with virtual learning and we're going to do our best with hybrid learning. We're going to, we're going to learn as we go along. Um, we're going to grow um, with this process as well. And we're going to provide the best possible instruction for our students in both parties. We understand technology is always a challenge at times in terms of connections, in terms of battery life, in terms of maybe a site not working, and we'll work around it. Um, we're going to do our best for sure to provide the best quality instruction for our students, just like we are during virtual learning. All right, so what does that look like? Number one, um, mentioned this before, their schedule, all students will be following their five block schedule with the same teacher, unless that's previously communicated. Daily objectives and new instruction will be shared with all cohorts simultaneously. Equity is the word, so there should be equal opportunities for access to the curriculum and instruction if you're a virtual learner, in-person learner, or an at-home learner in a specific cohort. It's very important. In essence, equity in terms of materials, curriculum, and instruction for all of the students in a particular class. And by the way, I'm looking at the right columns you can see here. The middle column is for the virtual phase, the right column is for the hybrid phase, which you can see is highlighted. All right, I, I want to, I, I applauded our seniors today and I applauded our, the freshman students who were very quiet in the Zoom. Um, I want to applaud you as parents. Thank you for your support. Attendance compared to the spring has been outstanding and that's for a variety of reasons, but number one is for your support and we thank you for that. Please continue to encourage um, your, your child or your children to, to log into the Zoom. It's very important to be engaged and focused during the lessons. We will continue with um, attendance accountability. 
um, during block one and each block of the school day, beginning at 7.35 a.m. So what does that look like? Um, number one, if they're an in-person learner, that's attendance, they're present. Um, if they're an at-home learner and they're logged on to the Zoom as they are doing right now, that's, that's counted as uh, present in terms of attendance. We recognize there's, there's uh, specific situations, um, whether they're sick, a sibling is sick, they're staying home for a variety of, of reasons, a flat tire, et cetera, a parent, a guardian approved reason. Um, we ask that they, our students communicate with the teacher so they understand that they're not going to be in person for that day. So long as they're access, accessing the information and they're present for the lesson via Zoom, they're in attendance. So that's, um, we communicated with our, our student body as well. We did with our staff is, again, we're flexible. We understand there's going to be situations when, when a student's at home, so long as they're on the Zoom and, and present for the class, um, then they're, they're marked as present in, in power school. So our teachers will be submitting uh, attendance daily as they're doing, excuse me, every block, and you'll be receiving alerts via attendance if there are any issues. Grading practices will remain the same. Um, as they are right now during the virtual learning phase. Again, very important. We understand the complexities as well as the realities. If we ever have to pivot back to virtual, I think you'll see that it's going to be very seamless in terms of instruction as well as in grading. All right, how, how is it going to be balanced within in a classroom? And that's the word that we're using and we shared with the staff is balance. We heard the feedback in terms of screen time and we want to ensure that we balance the asynchronous, the, the self-paced as well as the synchronous live via Zoom. Hope you've seen some developments from our, our staff with that as we get better and better with the tools to engage instruction technologically. Um, we understand that. So our in-person learners will be in class um, in, in front of the teacher, can access all the information in the front of the room via the, the inter board, the interactive board. They'll have their laptops in front of them, um, access their Canvas page, Google information, um, information that the, the teacher is sharing on their screen, if they're an in-person learner, on either their laptop or the front screen. Hopefully this does not confuse you and can, can actually answer some questions for you. Um, if you take a look, this is a, a graphic we tried to depict what a classroom would look like. I know some questions were asked about that. Um, again, I give teachers credit once again for, for working through how to use the technology we have in our classroom to um, lead instruction within the classroom. So as you can see here, um, the teachers at their desk, they have, or up front, they have access to number one, their desktop computer. Next to them, it looks like a camcorder, but we're gonna call that the document camera, which is critical to all of this. Um, that is the connection between our, our students at home, as well as the students that are in person. Every classroom is outfitted with a projector you can see the old school projector symbol right there, which is on the ceiling. That's critical as well, because that will project all the information to the inner right board and their active board. Our students in the classroom, as you can see, will have or requiring Mr. Price to be reviewing that um, devices for each student. Um, they can access the information number one on their laptop if they choose to do so or up front. They have the beauty of having the teacher up front um, communicating information as well as projecting that information and content on the interactive board. In addition to that, um, we have a speaker that's in the room that's uh, pretty loud as we've known from announcements where your students are able to hear the in-person learners as well as the home learners that are on Zoom as well as the teacher. So there's enough volume for the students that are in the class. The only time students will need a uh, headphones to access audio will be if they're in a breakout room. That's going to be really critical um, because they're interacting and access, uh, listening to students that are at home in a breakout room and virtual learners, as well as in the classroom. Other than that, their headphones can be down, their screens can be down unless they prefer to access the information via their laptop. All of this information, that's the bottom part, you see cohort A or B and V, will still receive the same type of curriculum, education and material that the students in, in the classroom are receiving exactly the same as how they're, how they're doing right now. Will this be a challenge for sure? Will we have challenges we're going to encounter with technology with the teachers? Yes, they're gonna spend a lot of time within the next few days, tomorrow in particular, uh, excuse me, Friday afternoon in particular, working collaboratively in teams to test the technology. 
Not going to be perfect on day one for sure. We're going to, going to learn. However, the intent's going to be there and for sure we're going to have high quality teaching and learning with, with our students for sure. All right. I'm going to turn over to Mr. Ascona for another part of the day. Bonus block. Thank you, Dr. Bacani. Um, so basically, uh, bonus block will uh, remain uh, very pretty similar to what we're doing now and what we've done in the past, uh, with um, with a couple of exceptions. So um, Monday through Thursday, uh, students will be going directly to their home-based bonus block classrooms. Uh, if they're in the building, um, obviously, if they're home, they will not be uh, going to the uh, to the classrooms, but they will be logging in uh, via Zoom. So before that, students, all students can sign up for clubs, activities, academic help. If they choose, um, they can use the, the time um, that's designated for bonus block as their study hall time if they'd like. Um, so, but we are encouraging students to select clubs, activities, and, and help because teachers will be offering those, um, those sessions. So once students sign up uh, for the uh, clubs, activities, help classes, uh, students will uh, go to a Zoom link, which is on their Canvas page, identify the teacher that has an open uh, session or who, who has uh, their scheduled session and log in and have a virtual uh, bonus block session with them. So students um, can basic, oh, students will also be able to um, attend in-person or virtual sessions with counselors, nurses, administrators, et cetera. Uh, they will be receiving uh, electronic passes in order to identify this or to uh, schedule these uh, meetings. Uh, we are eliminating the uh, use of any paper passes uh, for safety reasons. Thank you, Mr. Azcona. One of our most important parts of the day, Ms. King, breakfast and lunch. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bacani. So food services, we are excited to say that all the students in the high school will be offered free breakfast and free lunch through the end of the school year. So in doing that, uh, we are going to hand out the um, grab and go bags for breakfast in three locations throughout the building. We have been reviewing this with the students, but we will continue to do so. One will be in the concession stand in the Jim West lobby. Some will be in the cafeteria and others will be back by the pool. Uh, the only caveat is that the students are not to eat in classrooms. So we have designated locations through the buildings that they should eat and they need to be on time for their 735 start. We will always, we will continue to run the three lunches like we have in the past, um, an A, B, and a C, and they will be designated by the students block for teachers. The students will find out which lunch they have from their teachers over the next few days. Uh, students may pack their lunch, but they also may pick up slash purchase. And I say that because again, all students will get free lunch so they can pick it up and go, or they can purchase, uh, purchase additional items. Say they have one piece of pizza and they like another, they may do so. We are issuing all of the students a new ID with a barcode on it. So all they have to do is go through the line and scan their barcode um, to pay for any additional items. Again, we will have um, students socially distanced. So there will be different locations for eating but um, we will have everything fully stocked. There will be at least three daily options for student choice in the cafeteria. And um, we typically do pre-orders, but we are going to hold off until November just so we can get everyone comfortable and seated. And again, since we're offering the free uh, meals, we feel that uh, we wanna stay with those options. If you have any food related questions, you can email one of the two um, ladies at the bottom, or if you have any general questions about how we're handling it, you can feel free to email my office or any of the other assistant principals. Thank you, Ms. King. Appreciate it. I'm going to shift over to technology and Mr. Price. Thank you, Dr. Bacani. Uh, as previously, previously mentioned by Dr. Bacani a few minute, minutes ago, and with his little uh, screenshot, much better than uh, anything I created, thank you. Um, we wanted to let you know how the technology in the classroom is actually decided upon, tested, and, and how we got to where we are currently. Um, we did go through a renovation um, roughly four years ago and completed that. And at that time, we did receive new interactive boards, projectors, 
sound systems and so on. And those are all still in place. Uh, those document cameras Dr. Connie mentioned, uh, we call the hover cam. They serve dual roles as both the microphone for the entire classroom and a video camera uh, for whoever is there, if it's the teacher, if it's the entire class and so on. Building committees were set up for teachers to be part of. We've asked student groups feedback since March uh, in order to figure out how best to proceed moving forward with the hybrid. And that's where we are right now. Um, you've also heard and are currently experiencing a Zoom session right now. Uh, Zoom and Canvas are a necessary and everyday component of our instruction for all students, whether in the hybrid or virtual. Uh, what students need. So we did mention this in our communication home. I do want to clarify, and there was a question about it. Every student will need an individual device and charger daily. Now, we've had bring your own device for many years here at Plymouth White Marsh High School. Many parents choose not to send devices, even if they have them at home, and that is absolutely fine. Now, in the former model, when students were arriving every day, we had all these devices within each classroom. That will not be the case right now. We've removed the carts for extra room. We do not need students handling multiple devices all throughout the building. So we will issue them individually if needed. Um, we've been issuing them since March and we continue to do so up and through uh, next week. So if you decide at any time, hey, I will send uh, a device from home in, into school, that is absolutely fine. If you change your mind at any time, we will easily issue one device per student. There is a link on the main website, Plymouth Lane Marsh High School, for you to fill out. But if you can't find it, we'd rather just communicate that to us or uh, the main office tomorrow. We will contact you and set that up. Um, additionally, um, headphones are, or earbuds are required. Now, we did mention avoiding Bluetooth. It does not mean you cannot use them. What we are saying is that we have multiple devices depending on what classes your student is in. Some of your students may have been issued an iPad or a Chromebook or possibly even a surface if, if they've experienced classes like engineering or art. So not knowing how the experience or the age of the device will work with a Bluetooth, we went for the old plug and play option. Uh, the specifics are um, a 1.5 millimeter, um, I'm sorry, a 1.5 inch uh, output, but all these, this information is also on the Canvas page, which I'll review again in a moment, also mentioned earlier. So if you do want to bring in your, your Bluetooth, that is fine. The students are okay with that. That will work. We just are unsure about the troubleshooting component at this time. When students arrive to campus, if they're choosing the hybrid, our library and media center will also continue to be the central support hub for all students who have questions about instructional applications. Uh, my Canvas account's not working. I can't log into PowerSchool. I'm having a sound issue with Zoom. Uh, Mr. Adams is fantastic. He is our library media and instructional technology specialist. He works with the students there. So as they arrive in the building, they may scroll down. He may have a quick um, form that they scan with their phones or can quickly add their name and he'll contact them throughout the day. Um, there will be more information again as students visit. If they are, if students are remaining virtual, uh, we are going to continue to use the CSD support at colonialsd.org email. It's listed here on this slide, very top. And then the technology department has been great with forwarding that information to the right uh, individuals or whether it's the main office or district office. Um, before we move on, I also do want to talk about the acceptable use in code of conduct. I did mention bring your own device has been in play for many years here. We ask that you review the family handbook also on the website um, and also on the Canvas page. Uh, there's very specific pages that address bring your own device and what we expect with consequences and using uh, technology appropriately. And that definitely applies, obviously, as we move forward with um, instruction digitally. Uh, if we can go to the next screen, Dr. McConney. So you've heard Canvas, Canvas, Canvas. Many of you have, have found this option. And if you haven't, that's quite okay. Um, what we're, we're asking you to do is instead of Googling uh, Canvas, there's a very specific URL that you do need. It does have the Colonial SD moniker in it. You can see it here on this, this website or on this screen right here. Uh, and that will get you to a very familiar Colonial logo. And that's how you know you're in the right spot. Um, it will ask you to create a Canvas account. Click here, it's free. That is part of it right there. And when you do sign up, it's going to ask you for one thing. In order to be tied to your students' accounts, in order to see their class of pages, you do need a pairing code. 
there's one of only two ways to get this pairing code. Your student can easily log into their Canvas account and click the button that says pair with observer and they're going to get a six digit alphanumeric code to give to you directly that ties you specifically with your child. If you cannot find that or would rather just contact us, we can easily do it here as well. Um, you can call the main office, you can use that CSD support, just let us know who your student is, who the, what, you, what their ID is, if you know that, especially their grade, and we can easily return that information. It is very easy, and as Dr. Bacani mentioned, it is very helpful to make sure you are getting all the information as well directly from us and not necessarily through your child. And that is it for the Canvas page. Uh, this is what it, take, it looks like. And we did mention um, some of the things with tech support troubleshooting. I'm not going to go through all that information right now about printing and all the Wi-Fi, but what we've communicated to your children, and we are now communicating to you, that when you get to that Canvas page, class of 21, 22, 23, there is a button, Technology Resources, that takes you directly to where they need to go to figure out how to troubleshoot their, their issue that is unique to them and we'll point them in the right direction, also available for you. And that's all the information we have. Please feel free to add additional questions in the Q&A, and we will answer them, and I will pass it back to Dr. McConnell. Thanks, Mr. Price. I'm going to shift over to Mr. Azcona, and just to gently remind some of our families in terms of our code of conduct and virtual code of conduct. Mr. A. Thank you, Dr. McConnell. Uh, just to let you know, the code of conduct has not changed. We're still utilizing the same co code of conduct that we have at uh, PW. Uh, so students, uh, the one thing that uh, obviously we have some, some, um, um, some, something, you know, things in place to make sure the students are, are protected throughout the day. So we're asking all students to wear masks at all times, unless they're eating or drinking at lunch or breakfast, uh, socially distance themselves from others six feet apart, um, uh, when they're working with uh, partners or small groups, uh, they'll be doing that uh, via Zoom or share documents. Uh, and also uh, students will not be sharing um, any uh, equipment. We are going to be reducing paper um, so the students don't have uh, any cross-contamination. Um, and if we're completing any activities, uh, students will either have their own um, materials or we will use disposable materials. Dress guidelines have not changed whether students are in person or at home. Uh, students should uh, wear appropriate clothing, anything that does not um, cause a disruption to our school day uh, is appropriate. If it does, we will be asking students to change. Uh, students will be carrying IDs at all times. Um, students will be masked. So we need to have uh, an ID in order to identify students throughout the day. Also, students will be able to use uh, their, their IDs uh, barcode to scan items, whether it is in the cafeteria, the library media center, um, et cetera. Um, hallways, uh, students are not to congregate with, with their friends. Their goal is to, um, or the, the goal is to have students go directly to their classrooms. Um, and uh, while they go into the classrooms, obviously they should be using um, their uh, you know, appropriate language and at the right volume. Uh, vapes, you know, has been an issue in the past. Uh, we hope that uh, that issue is going away. Uh, but if students are caught with vapes, um, then certainly there will be con uh, consequences also, electronic devices are privileges. So if students don't utilize the electronic devices uh, properly, then there will certainly be consequences. The one thing that we did share is that uh, we don't want students videotaping one another uh, in the school. That is something that's not permitted because students in the school are minors uh, and they do not have the permission of parents in order to be videotaped. So we are sharing with students uh, to not videotape any other students. Uh, and also the academic integrity policy is still in place. Uh, no cheating, plagiarism, giving uh, or receiving tests, test answers, assignments, labs, docs, uh, used for the wrong reasons. So we're encouraging students to complete all of their own assignments. Mr. Azcona, thank you very much. I know that's uh, important information. Parents, appreciate your support with us. 
and shift over. I know we've been answering questions in the Q and A. A couple that we'll we'll wait till the end. One question that's in there will be answered with our next section. Um, I want to introduce Mr. Bretz and Mrs. Sexton. Thanks for being patient and waiting before you presented here. And I'll turn over to Mr. Bretz in terms of information with cleaning in the building and safety precautions. Thank you, Dr. Picani. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well first and foremost. Um, with the with the building itself, we're going to have to have it disinfected nightly, and you can see the gentleman there in the picture with a fogger or mister, as they call it, um, that will disinfect the entire room, all the hard surfaces, all the common touch areas will be cleaned multiple times during the day. Um, the ventilation system will meet the optimal CDC guidelines. All water fountains have been shut off, except for the touchless dispensers that where the kids can bring their water jugs to fill them back up during, throughout the day. Um, there are going to be wipes placed in every single classroom, uh, door stoppers to hold the doors open when needed. Um, hand sanitizer stations are in every classroom as well. Um, also, uh, I have to say thank you to you know Mr. Lally and his facilities team and the high school maintenance staff for all their hard work in helping get the building where we need it to be for the safety and well-being of everyone involved when we come back to hybrid starting Monday. Um, when we move to the classrooms, um, with the picture of the classrooms will look like, um, you can see every classroom is set up that they're socially distanced. Actually, actually there are about 10 classrooms left that need to be uh, configured yet. So we're still working on that uh, slowly, but surely everything will be ready to go for Monday. Uh, but as you can see, they are socially distant and enough space, teaching space up front for the teachers to work if they feel comfortable to, um, being able to use the inner whiteboard and all the other technology that's needed. Um, we'll move to the hallways, I believe is next. Um, so the hallways are now pretty much uh, traffic patterns. Um, you'll see the line down the middle, creating the, the, the directional ways we're going to go in the hallways. Um, every hallway is two directional at this point, um, since we are hybrid currently, and we have few enough students that we can go both ways. Uh, the stairwells, however, are one directional currently, uh, meaning that we're gonna have up and down sets of stairwells, and we're not gonna be allowing students to travel past back and forth across each other going up and down the steps. Um, so that is currently the way the hallways will be set up. Uh, when you take a look at the cafeteria, um, the cafeteria is set up socially distanced with a little please sit here sign uh, to have you socially distanced throughout the uh, cafeteria uh, and the other spaces that we will probably need to use to eat as well. Um, so everything is marked for the students socially distanced and the courtyard can be used as well for the students to use. Uh, and then when we talk about the safety screenings for students, um, again, reminder, parent guardian, we ask that you screen your parent before school each day. Um, students should stay home if they're not feeling well. Uh, the staff will monitor students as well uh, for the, well, the well, wellness of the students and evaluate with the school nurse uh, if they suspect an illness. Uh, we also have um, an isolation room that Mrs. Sexton will go over as well. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Sexton to take off the last four or five slides. Thank you, Mr. Bratch, much appreciated. Thanks. Sexton, thanks for being here today and key information for our parents. Thank you, Dr. Bacani. Um, so parents, what we're asking from you um, just to um, kind of keep, keep our community safe is that uh, you'll be aware of your, your contacts that your family, your students are, are having throughout their day. We know we're not in that strict lockdown that we were in the spring and and people are getting together in smart, small groups, but you, you just need to be aware that if, if you're hearing that your contacts are developing symptoms or anyone that you've been around is um, testing positive, um, we need you to be aware of that so you can make the right decisions for sending your student to school. Um, uh, we would ask that you evaluate them for symptoms daily before sending them. Um, the symptoms we're talking about are runny nose, congestion, sore throat, fever, um, of course, the ones we hear a lot for COVID are a loss of taste and smell, um, muscle pain, body aches, and even some GI symptoms like vomiting, uh, diarrhea, and such. Um, so we, even pre-COVID, have a temperature rule here at school that you would not send your student if they're 100 or more degrees. So that, that goes as well. Um, 
we would want you to keep your student home if, if they're running a fever in the morning. Um, also, you know, everything changes daily when you're watching the news um, with what states are considered high risk and what Pennsylvania is putting on their travel restrictions. So we would ask you to just monitor that if your child's uh, traveling out of state uh, to visit family or with a travel sports team or uh, what have you, just to, to monitor. Um, can we go back just for a moment? Um, just to monitor uh, what the state guidance is as far as traveling. Um, Trigger there, sorry, but that was my error there. In a sec. Okay. Um, and then um, definitely when you're when in doubt, keep them home. And and the beauty of this setup is like Dr. Bakani and all the administrators said, it's very seamless that if if your child is you know, exhibiting some symptoms and you're just not sure, keep them home, let them log on and, and participate in their education from home and play it safe that day. Um, and then definitely as far as if you're ever um, have your student tested and they test positive or anyone in the household test positive or the uh, Department of Health is recommending a quarantine, we would want you to, to communicate that with the school and with the, my office and the nurse. Um, so here's an infographic that is on um, the website and just kind of helps you it's kind of that decision tree, you know, have you been exposed, are you having symptoms, do you have the fever, um, and just guiding you whether to stay home or send your student to school. Um, there is the return to school criteria down there and we're pretty much following um, what the Montgomery County Office of Public Health is putting out. Um, so you'll see, you know, if they're updating their guidance for us, we will update our, our kind of rules and regs that we're gonna follow as far as allowing students to return after illness. Um, so if your student's here and becomes ill or injured, um, or like I believe Mr. Ascona mentioned, we're getting rid of uh, the paper passes just to eliminate, um, you know, that extra touch and, and passing germs in the building. So um, students will be able to uh, request from their teacher that they go to the nurse. Teachers will have them fill out an online pass, which is basically a Google form. Um, and in that Google form, it'll just ask a few um, questions regarding the visit and especially have them just check off any symptoms that they're having. And that'll give us a heads up um, just what they're coming to the nurse's office for. Um, we're, also going to send a confirmation email once we once we see that uh, form generate just to let them know that yes it's okay to come down now um, and that we haven't hit our limit in the office obviously with social distancing we need to limit the number of students in here so when the pass is filled out um, someone in the nurse's office myself another nurse or the secretary would be sending a confirmation email to the student okay to come down um, and depending on the symptoms that they've checked off we would be at, at either meeting them at the door and taking them over to the isolation room if we feel that um, they're maybe at risk for having COVID-like symptoms. Um, that's directly across from my office and we would evaluate them there. Um, or if it's something simple like a Band-Aid or feminine hygiene product or something um, that's not concerning for COVID, we would bring them into the nurse's office and treat them appropriately. Um, so the goal is then get them back to class if able and send them home if it's indicated. Uh, like I said earlier, we're following the Montgomery County um, school exclusion recommendations and that is on the website. And um, as they update it, uh, we will update it on the website as well. Um, but if, if we go to the next slide, you can take a look. It's, it's pretty strict um, and it, it's for our safety. But basically, if I see a student in my office um, with two symptoms, such as headache and sore throat, um, it's going to trigger me to send them home and recommend a doctor's visit, um, possibly talking to the doctor about COVID testing. Um, and then we would want them to uh, not return to school until they either have a differential diagnosis where the doctor might say, you know what, I think this is fall allergies or it's strep throat. Um, and they're being treated appropriately. So you would need that differential diagnosis. You'd need to be fever free for 24 hours uh, with no medications influencing that and an improvement of symptoms. Um, either that or um, a negative COVID test. Um, you know, if the doctor feels that that's recommended, 
and um, keep you out 10 days from the first symptoms if you um, opt not to get tested or the, the doctor doesn't feel they can give another diagnosis but doesn't feel that um, COVID testing is warranted. Um, so you can kind of see there's different columns and if you're testing positive, negative, with or without symptoms, there's different steps to follow. Um, and like I said, it, it's, it's definitely a fluid document and the Montgomery County Office of Public Health is, is updating it as they see fit and, and we're going to go with their recommendations 100% of the time. Um, and that's why it's important that you're monitoring your kids before you send them to us. Um, because like I said, it, you know, it could be symptoms that look very much like fall allergies or another ailment, but um, we're going to err on the side of caution and send them home um, if they present in our office, either on their own or if a teacher um, can see that they're exhibiting symptoms, the teachers would send them down. So I think, I think that's it for me. Um, but definitely, if you have any questions, um, about when to send your kids to school, we would definitely recommend give me a call and we can talk through it and look at the, the recommendations from the um, Montgomery County Department of Health. Um, so some of the questions we've seen are, you know, are we going to be notified if there's cases in the school? So as you've seen already, we've sent emails out if there's a positive case um, just to make families aware but you're not gonna be personally notified um, of a positive case unless your student's considered a close contact to the positive case, which means that they've been closer than six feet for 15, or minute, 15 minutes or more um, to the person who's tested positive. So at, every speaker tonight has said, we wanna keep that social distance. Um, so the goal is we're not gonna have a lot of these close contacts. Reality is we may, <laughs> but the goal is that, um, you know, if we do have positive cases, there's not going to be a lot of close contacts that we have to get in touch with. Um, but that would come from the Montgomery County uh, Department of Health. Um, and then they, we would follow their guidance as well, as far as if we were to have more cases, you know, what we need to do as a school community, as far as quarantining or closing of buildings or, or um, the whole district. So, um, I think, I think that's it. We're, we're leaning on the Montgomery County Department of Health for our guidance in this, um, but certainly we're here to help you make the decisions whether or not to send your kids to school. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sexton, for your information and for being available for parents and guardians if they have any questions at all. Thanks. Thank you. All right. One more portion left, and we have a variety of supports that we provide our, our students. Ms. King? Hi again, I'm just here to remind you that we have a phenomenal guidance team at the high school. It's comprised of four counselors that split up the alphabet. We have our college counselor, Mrs. Lynch, our school psychologist, and then two phenomenal community counselors. Any which, any, any one of these individuals as, far, as well as the administrative team can help you with um, any a, a gamut of issues. But really we have been working together since we left in March to support the students, whether it be academically or emotionally. Um, we meet daily. Uh, we have scheduled meetings weekly just to really monitor grades, monitor um, attendance and, and every other issue that we can see through a screen or that we hear from you. So if you feel that you um, need to talk to somebody about your child, again, feel free to reach out to any one of those individuals or any one of us, and we will continue to support our students. But um, we, I feel we've really done a, a, a nice job um, since March with this team to try and support all of our kids. Thank you, Ms. King. To close, this is uh, posted on our um, digital newsletter, just give some direction for families and it's on Canvas as well. If you have particular questions, I think in essence, we are here to support all of you. We have a whole team of people, as Ms. King alluded to, our counselors, administration, obviously our teachers, if you need support. Um, this obviously is a new endeavor for all of us. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, through the Q&A, we have um, answered many of the questions that you have. I do want to re-communicate the learning will be different for all of our in-person learners. They will not be on Zoom the entire block of the school day. Sitting in Mr. Coletta's class as we practiced um, this session of in-person learning, 
with the English department and some social studies departments, as well as you get the teacher up front. There's the value of having my kids are at school right now in their school district and they come home really excited to say what they learned from their actual teacher. There's no one that can replace the actual teacher up front in the classroom. We're teaching them um, virtually. So that's number one, having that as a positive, as well as having that classroom environment and your peers around you, as well as obviously accessing the information um, and content up front on the inner right board and on the whiteboard rather than a, a device if needed. Still with the ability to collaborate with your colleagues if needed with Zoom. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I know that a, a, a parent posted that on, in the chat room in the Q&A. It will be different than um, in virtual learning. However, on the other side, if the virtual learners are at home, if it's a cohort of students at home, still receive the same quality education you are right now during virtual learning. It is a balance, a very challenge, big challenge for our teachers. So while we have the Fridays and half days off for professional development, um, we feel very confident that we're going to execute that in a successful manner. All right, to close, in terms of our communication plan, um, we do have two more uh, road trips, so to speak, uh, road shows uh, via Zoom um, tomorrow with the class of 22 and class of 23. Looking forward to that for your children to be part of that as well. Look for communication um, from myself and Mr. Price as well in terms of scheduling and in terms of preparing for Monday. And that will come out on Friday. You know, will include it will include your child's updated schedule in terms of if it is changed because of a, a particular request on your part of a cohort. And finally, if you look at the top, um, part of the link that will be sent via letter is a hybrid learning resource. You're probably thinking, how can I access all this information will be included in that digital resource for you all in a one-stop shop. Once again, a lot of info for you. We are here to support. Um, feel free, we'll be here for a little bit longer, several minutes if you have a question posted in the Q&A. If not, please send us an email individually or set up a, give us a call in the office uh, th this evening or tomorrow morning. We'll be sure to touch base with you. Thank you so much, parents and guardians, for all of your support as we transi transition to hybrid. Have a great night and looking forward to seeing our students on Monday. Thanks.